Hello, and welcome to the first annual Cine Shadow Moonlight Noir Vember, where we will go through the history of film noir, its influences, the seminal films of the 40s and 50s, and the neo-noirs of modern cinema. One film a day for the next 30 days, laid back style. One influence of classic noir comes from Germany during the Weimar Republic, after World War I, throughout the 1920s and early 30s. This is where we get our shadowy visuals and distorted claustrophobic city look, very unnatural. The best example is Robert Wine's The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari from 1920. Other examples are the F.W. Murnau films like Nosferatu and The Last Laugh, and the Fritz Lang epics such as the Dr. Mabusa films, Spies, and Metropolis. But today we will be talking about Lang's 1931 classic, M, as I think this best encapsulates the bond between expressionism and classic noir. Let it begin. To all you out of work soda jerks without a penny to pinch, to the detectives with all the answers, to the dastardly dames who play men like baby dolls, and the trusted ones too pure for this world. And all you double-crossing, backstabbing, ruthless, baby-faced amateurs, this one's for you. So suit up, turn out the lights, put the match to your smokes, and sit back for the darker side of things. Sin a shadow moonlights. Just you wait, it won't be long. The man in black will soon be here. With his cleaver's blade so true, he'll make mincemeat out of you. So the plot of M surrounds child murderer Hans Beckert, played menacingly by Peter Lorre in his first film role. Basically that's what he is, a child murderer running around terrorizing this German town. We're first introduced to his character by shot of his wanted poster. We see a little girl bouncing a ball down the street, Elsie, and the camera pans up to the poster. We see his menacing shadow creep over it as he's looming towards her. After he introduces himself to her, he takes her, buys her balloon, and kills her. This sends the town into an uproar, even more than they were before. They knew about him, but it's getting worse and worse, and the public is demanding some answers and some results. He's a very menacing bastard. After killing Elsie, he writes a note to the police officers bragging about the crime and saying that he'll do it again and again. This pisses him off even more. The cops start taking drastic measures in raiding gin joints and messing with the more prestigious criminals in the underground, looking for any clue at all that they can. The whole entire police force is after this man because, let's face it, no one likes a guy killing children. No one. Not even the criminals. This makes the criminals mad as well as this is hurting their business. They put up a lottery for 15,000 marks and put it out to all the beggars of the town saying that if you find this man, we will give you this money. So Becker goes out another night in search of another victim. And when he finds her, he starts whistling gleefully. This alerts the attention of the blind man who had previously sold him the balloon right before he killed Elsie. He follows him, but not enough. And he alerts some of the other beggars, and eventually they mark him with the M. So now everybody knows who it is. Now the hunt is on. Hans notices the M on the back of his shoulder, and now he's scared. He runs for his life. The people in the city closing in on him, hidden only by shadows and darkness. He notices a group of people leaving the closing shops, and he's able to sneak in and hide in the storage room. The beggars eventually close in on him again and take over the shop, knocking out a few of the guards and trying not to alert the authorities. They eventually find him hiding in the storage room and take him away to his kangaroo court. The people are now going to have their trial. They will all be judge, jury, and executioner, if so be. The cinematography for this film is amazing. I mean, that's what the Germans are really good at. There's a shot once Elsie has been captured, 
when her mother is calling for her to come to supper. The mother calls her name, Elsie, shot of an empty staircase. Elsie, shot of an empty attic. Elsie, shot of an empty place at the table. Elsie, shot of the bush where a ball rolls out from it. We know what her fate has been. The final shot is the balloon hung in the telephone wires in the shape of a child. Our imagination takes us away. There's another shot where Hans Beckert sees a girl reflected through a shop window mirror surrounded by a border of knives. The symbolism is obvious. His reaction is disturbing. He gets excited instantly and goes for his final kill. There's another shot after the thieves have ransacked the shop where Beckert was hiding in. They dig tunnels, they do a lot of stuff. They break through floors, ceilings, everything. There's a shot of one of the thieves climbing up a rope, only to reveal that he's climbing up to the hands of the police. Probably my favorite shot of the whole movie is a shot of the Beggar's Restaurant, all done in one take. It takes you through all the different sorts of characters that are staying there as they divide up all of their earnings and all the stuff like that. And they have great quotes like, Hey, stop snoring. You'll wake up the lice. And this cheese stinks so good. It's amazing. I love it. This film is also notable for being Fritz Lang's first sound film. I think the best showcase of how he uses sound is with Peter Lorre's whistling. He whistles in the hall of the Mountain King throughout the movie, and it signifies when you know he's coming. Kind of like the shark in Jaws when you hear that dun 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 You know you're in trouble. I think it's great. Like I said before, the film is very dark and shadowy. There's some great smoke because in this film, everybody smokes. Everyone. The cops, the criminals, the ladies, everybody. There's also a great shot where there's a man with a cigar, but he has it located inside of a pipe. I have never seen a pipe cigar before. The smoke is showcased really well in the scenes that intercut between the criminals trying to figure out what they're going to do about the murderer and the police trying to figure it out. The movie's also shot documentary style. So you really can get into it and feel that you're actually there, like a fly on the wall, trying to see when and if they're going to catch the man. Overall, this film is a very moving and deeply disturbing picture. When you think back to the 30s, you can't picture a film like this being made. But then, when you compare it to what was going on in Germany at the time, with the rise of the Nazi party, it all makes sense. I believe Fritz Lang said that this was his favorite film that he had ever made. And it is a damn good one. Check it out.